A look there at U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago as we join you for another edition of Baseball on the Show. Opening day for the 2014 season between the Minnesota Twins and the Chicago White Sox. Hi again, everybody. It's finally here. Welcome to our special opening day edition of Baseball on the Show. I'm joined by Eric Karros and Steve Lyons. And Steve, as we get set to get things going, it's the pitching that has to be considered one of the strong points on this ball club. Yeah, and pitching is going to be important for these guys. No question about it. They're only going to go as far as this group right here is going to take them. And to me, it looks like a staff that's capable of getting the job done. The game's count starting now. It's opening day. It's the show. And it's coming up next. crowd is ready to erupt as their guys get set to take the field. Let's join public address announcer Mike Carlucci. And now, your Chicago Red Sox. Quickly now, we'll look at the two men who are entrusted with the starting pitching assignment here to begin the new year. More from the guys as this one goes along. But first, let's take a look at the starting lineup for the visiting Minnesota Twins. As Ron Gardenhire's starting nine will look like this. They'll match up against one of the toughest around, the all-star lefty Chris Sale. Behind him, the White Sox defensively will line up like this. Presley will step to the plate now as we're ready to get this one underway. Right down Broadway that time. Strike one. Oh, and you wonder if maybe he decided beforehand just to take a pitch up there first. Too bad for him because that thing was right down Broadway. First pitch, 310. That's over, but low, it's a ball and a strike. And Chicago is a far cry from the 90s all spring training. 48 degrees, our game time temperature. Just does manage to get a piece there as this is bounced foul. Now he jams him here as this is flared right back over the mound. And Beckham's throw is in time at first, one away. And this is not an easy play when you have to range to your right. He doesn't really have a chance to set himself up, so this is all arm, but he makes it look routine. Pedro Florimon digs in at the plate. Now here's a slider that can't quite get back to the outside corner. It's ball one. One out, nobody on. And wow, 
a very high strike, but a strike nonetheless, and it's one and one. And after that call, you know he's got to be turning around to say something like, hey, you know what? This guy doesn't need any help. And he swings on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. And he gets some pretty good wood on it here as this is lifted to fairly deep left. Kayaza is going to get there as he backs up to put it away. And there are two gone now. Batting third, catcher. Joe Maurer. Joe Maurer will have his first opportunity now as it comes with the bases empty here in the top of the first. Watches a fastball right there for strike one. And this is fouled back and out of play. And a check swing here. They'll appeal it down to third. No swing, says Woody Keller. It's ball one. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Just getting started here on the south side in this one. And he takes ball three, so it's a full count now. toward the third base dugout but this will get back into the seats out of play he'll try it again three and two now a ball lined to the left side but foul Payoff pitch is chopped foul at home plate, so we'll do it again. Still three and two. Hit high, but foul as that'll get in amongst the fans. Another payoff pitch. Just does stay alive as this is fouled back. have the first base runner of the ball game here as that misses and it's a two out walk. Wow, just a great at bat right there. Simple as that. Patient, laid off some tough pitches. He was rewarded. Josh Willingham will dig in now, hoping to perhaps make him pay for the two out walk. Fastball in the dirt, but it's blocked nicely as he keeps it in front of him. And he watches one miss outside, 2-0 now. Just getting deeper and deeper into trouble here in the first inning. He's walked one guy already, now he's fallen behind another guy here. strike and it's two and one well, that one's at 94 so velocity's good right now
And this is going to be a foul ball. Changes up on him, but that's in the dirt for a ball. And even though that runs the count full, you'll at least get the benefit of giving that runner at first a head start here. Now a fastball swung on and missed, and that is out number three. One left for Minnesota. It's the Twins nothing. White Sox coming to bat. Major League Baseball is on the show. Now the starting lineup for the White Sox looks like this. They'll face a tough matchup indeed as they go to work against veteran right-hander Ricky Nolasco. Quickly a look now at the defensive alignment they'll face in this one. Alejandro Deaza will step in now to lead things off in the home half of the first. And leading off for the White Sox. Left fielder, Alejandro Deaza. And he gets ahead here with the fastball. Strike one. Deaza, sneaky power from the top of the lineup. 17 home runs a year ago. Yeah, easily a career high. And this is a guy that only goes about a buck 90. But he's proven that he can be more than just a slash hitter or a guy that beats out ground balls. And he lays off for ball one. Line hard to the left side. Foul. And he takes strike three called on the fastball. One gone. Well, a little surprising you wouldn't pull the trigger on that one right there. This isn't anything fancy. Just a right over the top four seam fastball. Absolutely frozen. Adam Eaton will take his cuts now. And this is lined into left field for their first hit of the ball game. Well, if these guys are going to do anything this season, he's going to need to be a big part of that offense. And he comes through big time right here with a base hit in his very first step back. Paul Canerco will get his first shot now with the runner at first following the one-out single. And here's the first pitch. And this is taken outside for ball one. Not close. It's 2-0. Oh. Yeah, and you got to be careful that you don't speed up your delivery too much with a base dealer on first. Or you might wind up walking this guy, too. And here's a fastball for a strike. Two and one now. And you wonder if maybe he was taken there because he thought his runner was going to be moving from first. Now a fastball for a strike, and from 2-0, oh, it's back to 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, kind of a late decision to swing there. Even if he hits that thing, that might just be a routine fly to right. On, 
Now a swing and a softly hit ground ball. There's one. Back to first and a great stretch there may be the difference. It's a double play and the inning is over. White Sox come up empty first time around. We'll head to the second in Chicago. No score. Trevor Plouffe leads things off now in the top half of the second. For Minnesota, third baseman, Trevor Plouffe. Let's go, guys! Come on! And he catches the inside corner for a called strike. Nothing in one. The speculation, of course, with whomever the third baseman is to begin the season is that he's essentially just keeping the seat warm for one of their two top prospects as the Twins should be all set with budding superstars at third base and in center field. Now the pitch by Sale is hit over to Beckham at second base. Throw to first will be in time, and there's one gone here to start the second. Batting six, second baseman, Brian... Dozier. Brian Dozier steps in now. And he gets a piece here as this ball is fouled away. No score here as we play inning number two. And this is fouled back and out of play. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's one and two. And that's his strikeout pitch right there. You know, you'll see a lot of guys swing right over the top of that one. That's a great job there just to hold off. To two balls and two strikes now. Yeah, all hard stuff here to get ahead. But now they're trying to get him out with a breaking ball, and he's not falling for it. And this is in the air down the left field line and into foul territory. Gayaza is over now, and he puts this one away in foul territory, and there are two men out. Batting seven, right fielder, Oswaldo Arcia. Oswaldo Arcia will stand in here, looking to keep the inning alive with two gone now in the top of the second. Here's the first offering. Now here's a ball hit hard on the ground to second. A dive, but he can't get a glove on it. It's through for a base hit. Now you could see him just basically jumping at that first pitch. He pulls it into right field for a solid base hit. So we're runner at first here with two gone in the inning. And digging in is the left fielder, Jason Kubel. Inside with the fastball, it's 1-0. and oh. Pitch count already becoming a factor. He's at 34 now, still not out of the second inning. Big swing and a miss at the changeup, a ball and a strike. Yeah, just really jumping out at that last pitch. He had him thinking fastball, maybe even slider. And that's more of a slurve than a slider, but whatever it is, it's one and two. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Slider, and that's hit on the ground towards second. Throw on to Canerco gets him, and the inning is over. Twins wind up stranding one. 
We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Adam Dunn will start things off in the bottom of the second. Designated hitter, Adam Dunn. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Here we go. Went about halfway there, but it's a called strike regardless. There was some talk near the end of the year last season that that might be all for Dunn, but at 34, he's back for a 14th big league season. Yeah, he's not walking away from that big money. No way. I, I think a lot of it had to do with how poorly the White Sox played last year. Remember, they were one of the favorites to win the division, and then things went south. They trade away guys like PV and Rios and all of a sudden you're on a losing team in rebuilding mode and you're not having a lot of fun at the ballpark. Swing and a hard liner to center field. And that is down as that could be two bases. He'll get it into second. But he'll be in there with a double. Oh, that one sounded great off the bat. That's a good, crisp line drive right here to start the inning, and he'll make it up to second with a leadoff double. Avisail Garcia will stand in now with a good chance to break the seal here following the leadoff double. Well, it's a good RBI opportunity, but you've got to remember your first job, which is to at least get that guy over to third base. Feeble swing that time. It's 0-1. Yeah, he really pulled off of that one, and that's not the kind of swing we're accustomed to seeing from a guy like him. Right, especially starting off an at-bat. Well hit to right, but a foul ball. A runner at second, nobody out. Now a swing, and he pops him up. This is right out in front of the mound. Nolasco will take it himself for the first out of the inning. And you know, you're going to see this a lot with a guy who has a great fastball like he does. This one's on the inner half of the plate, and it's so easy for that bat to just sort of drag through the zone. It's hard to catch up with that thing. And you see right here, he's going to make contact right below the label. And this is just going to turn into an easy, soft liner. Connor Gillespie will get his first shot at it here. It's sharply as this is pulled into right, but he'll barely have to move out there in right as he hauls this one in for the second out. This ball's just hit way too hard to think about tagging up and trying for third, so he's just going to have to be happy where he is right there at second. Alexi Ramirez will stand in here for the first time, looking to pick up that runner from second with two away here. Too high, 1-0. Oh. Short lead from second, now the pitch. A high strike there, and it's 1-1. One and one. Now a ball lined toward the alley in left center. Dives and he makes the catch. How about that for an exclamation point to the end of the inning? Worth a second look here as this is a beauty to end the inning. Too complete. Still scoreless here on the show. Peter Kahn will step in here to start their half of the third with the top of the order to follow. 
Now the first pitch. Too high that time with the innings first pitch. It's ball one. Swing and he pops him up. Looks to be playable in foul ground. And Canerco's able to look this one in for the first out. And I think anytime you hit a ball that softly on a fastball, you can pretty much bet you were either jammed on it or got caught reaching. And here you can see as this pitch ties him up inside, he's not able to get the sweet spot on the baseball. Alex Presley will get a second shot now. He grounded out to start the ball game. Good slider here to start the at bat, but it's ruled a ball, 1 and 0. And he's tracking that all the way across the plate, but that had too much sweep to it for him to think of swinging. Now a ground ball towards the hole. And he's safe at first as he beats this one out by about a half a step. Never an easy play right there. Just trying to hit your pitcher in stride when you know it's going to be a close play at the back. And this time, the flip comes up just a little too late, and that's an infield single. Pedro Florimon will try it again. He flew out his first time. And he'll take strike one on the fastball, registering at 93 that time. All right, White Sox. Swing, and a miss. Swing and a ball hit on the ground. The second for one. On to Conerco, but it's too late as they just get the one. This is always a tough throw here for a first baseman coming off the bag. You got to make sure that you don't just throw the ball right into the runner's back heading down to second base. Here he takes just a little extra time to make sure that he makes a good throw. And they're going to settle for just one at second. So it's a runner at first with two gone. And that'll bring in a former batting champion catcher Joe Maurer. And this is off the corner and low. Ball one. And this one misses again to Maurer. 2-0 and now. Yeah, they're being really careful with this guy. Remember, they walked him the first time around, and now they're behind 2-0 and to him right here. And over towards the dugout, but this one will get into the stands. Two and one to the left-handed hitting Maurer. Oh, got him to swing on top of that one as this ball's dribbled out in front of the mound. Throw on to Canerco will be in time, and the inning is over. One left for Minnesota. Home half of the third coming up. No score. Gordon Beckham makes his way to the plate to get us started here in the bottom of inning number three. Second baseman, Gordon Beckham. And this one's not close. It's in the dirt for ball one. Yeah, those are the ones you like to start in that bat, especially your first time up. I agree. Give me a nice easy one in the dirt that I can take so I can really get ahead in that count early. Just got a piece of it as it's fouled back. Now here's a swing and a ball hit well out there toward right center. And this will be pulled in just in front of the warning track for the first out. 
trying to work the big part of the ballpark there. You see him ride it the other way, but this is great closing speed out there in center field as he runs this one down. Tyler Flowers will be the batter. Now here's the first pitch. Swinging a P-Rod back to the mound. Whoa, but that's just self-defense as he spears it for the out. Yeah, both these two now starters better. are matching each Let's other in the early it. inning, stride for stride. He's an out away now from a 1-2-3 bottom of the third. Alejandro Deaza will stand in as the lineup turns over here. He was called out on strikes to open the home first. Open stance by Deaza. Here's the pitch. And that's in there for strike one. Here's one that misses high. It's one and one. Now a ball swung on and heading for the stands in right, and that'll move the count to one and two now. One two pitch is swung on and lifted in the air out to center field. And Presley settles under it to make the catch, and that ends the inning. Down in order go the White Sox. We'll head to the fourth, still scoreless. Josh Willingham will stand in now to get us going here in the fourth. The designated hitter, Josh Willingham. In there at the knees, strike one. And this catches the zone as well. It's 0-2 now. So far, he's the only guy that struck out for these guys. He's in danger of making it two now. And he couldn't get him to chase the 0-2 fastball. It's 1-2. and two. Well, I, I think that fastball is just for show there. He's not trying to throw this for a strike. Here comes the one two from Sale. And he lays off it to even the count two and two. He's hoping to just run that heater by him. So he's ramped up the velocity here the last two pitches. And a full count as that misses. It's three and two now. Oh, I think he'd be real happy with a leadoff walk. Something just to get things started against this guy. And that's swung on and fouled straight back. Once again, a 3-2. And the payoff pitch here is hit on the ground down to third. Throw to first in time. One gone here in the fourth. Third baseman number 24, Trevor Plouffe. Trevor Plouffe will stand in. He grounded out his first time. Now the first pitch. The fastball here is he'll take a look at ball one, one and oh. I think that's consistent with how the strike zone gets called nowadays. That's a strike in the rule book, but most umpires won't give you that pitch anymore. Popcorn, yeah. 
and he falls behind now 2 and 0. And you go back to the call on that very first pitch how important that was. Now instead of a 1 and 1 count you're at 2 and 0 with a really dangerous hitter up there. Both teams with just two hits apiece thus far. And now a ball hit fairly well here out to the deep part of left field. Gayaza is going to get there as he backs up to put it away. And there are two gone now. Well, we're, we're still looking for that first run of the ball game. Thought for a second this might be it, but, but it just didn't have enough steam behind it. Brian Dozier will dig in here. He flew out his first time around. And ooh, looks like he got the call there on the pitch inside. It's nothing in one. Let's go, White Sox. And now a slider in on the hands, and he's lucky that one didn't come and get him. Uh, you don't want guys to get too comfortable up there, so that's a good idea to run something in tight. Ready now on one and one. Well. And this is going to be a foul ball. Now a fastball as he just reared up and let that one fly and the inning is over. Okay. Twins are set down one, two, three. On to the bottom of the fourth now, still with no score. Adam Eaton will stand in to start it out for the White Sox. And behind him, batting next, Paul Canerco. First pitch coming. Here's a slider that's inside, 1-0. and oh. Good Two and 2-0 oh now. Two tough sliders there, back-to-back, -back, and he couldn't get him to bite on either. Now he might have to change tack here, down 2-0. Here's the 2-0 pitch. 3-0 and oh now. And it goes without saying, but this has to be in the strike zone. You don't want him on base to start off the inning. That one's in there, 3-1. Misses for ball four. It's a leadoff walk that starts the bottom of the fourth. Now in a scoreless game, I've got a hunch he may get a green light here. He may want to try and get something started that way. Paul Canerco will dig in. 0 for 1 here in this one. Grounded foul toward the coaching box at third. And there's ball one. That's a good pitch call right there on that fastball away. That works almost like a pitch out, just in case he's thinking about it over there at first. And this is fouled back and out of play. One, two. Now a swing and a miss by Canerco as he's retired for the first out. 
Um, this is just an excellent pitch right here. Location right at the bottom of the strike zone. And if you don't get him to swing through it, hopefully he's going to hit that ball on the ground somewhere and you'll get ground ball outs. But they'll take that strikeout for out number one. Adam Dunn will stand in here. He doubled his first time around. Outside target here, and he hits it for strike one. Boy, his control has been outstanding so far. And there's another pitch right on the black. Go on top. Done with that open stance, and here's the pitch. One and one. And if he can get himself into a fastball count, don't be surprised if he has a big cut at something. Maybe try and break this tie ball game. And they pitch out here, but nothing's going on. Hard hit towards center. Presley is there, two gone. So the runner stays at first here with two away, and that brings us to our pitch speed comparison for these two starters. And both guys have been coming with some low to mid-90s heat here, 96 versus 93 as the top two speeds thus far. Avisail Garcia will dig in. He popped out his first time. Ball one. Look out, 2 and 0 oh now. Can't imagine guys like that too much. Yeah, not too much indeed. You start getting into the danger area when it's up and in that eye. Oh, and he took a big swing at that one as this is driven out to deep left center field. And now he has some trouble with it in left. And the opening salvo is fired here as they take a one to nothing lead. And he is in there with an RBI triple. Boy, a big spot for that. Comes through with a two-out RBI triple to pick up the first run of the ball. Connor Gillespie will stand in. A line-out victim his first time. in there and it's 0 and 1. And you know, this is a guy that loves the ball down and in. It's one of the locations he really covers well, so they're going to want to mix their spots here. Right back with another fastball. It's 0 and 2 now. Well, no taking now. He's going to have to swing the bat. Slider swung on and missed, and the side is retired. One for the Sox in the inning on this RBI triple. We played four. It's now 1-0 Chicago. Oswaldo Arcia will make his way towards the box to lead off the fifth. Right fielder, Oswaldo Garcia. Now here's a swing and a high pop-up. Really got under this one. Out near the bag at second. Beckham is there to put this one away, and it's a very quick out to start the fifth. Boy, that's just another off-balance swing right there. 
Not only are these guys light on hits, they're not even making solid contact right now. Jason Kubel will stand in. He grounded out his first time. Now a fastball on the inside corner, and he takes a look at strike one. You can tell here, in his mind, he's thinking, quick inning. He's not even trying to set guys up. He's coming right after them. That's in there as well. It's a quick 0-2 count. Real good lateral movement on that two-seam fastball. That pitch is money for him when it's moving like that. So just keep on throwing it. And this is swung on and missed. So it's two up, two down to start the fifth. Oh, you got to like the way he's throwing the ball right now. You get a one-pitch out to start the inning, and then you follow that up with a three-pitch strikeout. He's settling in nicely now. Peter Kahn will dig in. He popped out in foul territory his first time. Trying to work that slider to the outer half, but it misses 1-0. Yeah, and when that pitch starts off outside, it's much easier to get a better view of it and then just lay off. No runs, two hits, and no errors in the ballgame for Minnesota. On the ground to third. Throw on to Canerco, gets him, and the inning is over. Down go the Twins in order. It remains 1-0. Alexi Ramirez will stand in to lead things off in the bottom of the fifth. The shortstop, Alexi Ramirez. Now a ball hit high and deep out there to left center field. And this will carry him over that short outfield fence down there for a ground rule double. Yeah, good start to the inning there. You could see him really turn on this pitch and drive at that time. It'll wind up popping over the wall out there, but no matter, he was going to be in easily with two anyway. Gordon Beckham will stand in with a runner in scoring position already here following the ground rule double. Inside with the first pitch splitter, and it's 1-0. For Ramirez, he records his first double of the year here on opening day. Now a ball hit in the air, but in play perhaps down the line. Kubel will get there as he makes the catch in foul territory for the first out. And the runner, not tagging, will retreat to second base. Now, a fly ball to left's not going to do you any good in this situation. Look, you got a guy on second and nobody out. If you take this to right field and advance a runner, then at least you've made a productive out. Instead, this is just a waste. Tyler Flowers comes on with one gone here as he looks at a called strike one. And EK, I don't know about you, but I really hated getting a bad call on that very first pitch. Hey, jeez. It puts you just in a terrible frame of mind. Now a look and a throw back to second. Runner is back. Not much of a lead at second. Now here's the pitch. And now this is swung on and pulled down the third base line. But that'll get foul. It's 0-2 now. Slider. Ooh, thought he had him, but it's 1-2. And, and even on 1-2 and two now, you've got to expand the strike zone a little up there. You can't go down looking here. You got to put this ball in play.
close to the bag. It's second there. Now the pitch. And this pitch misses for a ball, and the Chicago catcher's back even at two and two. And the hope was that he would have chased one of those pitches, but now on two and two, I don't think you fool around anymore. How about a little bump here, okay? And a swing and a bouncing ball back up the middle. And, oh, that looked like it caught him squarely in the arm. And they wind up getting the out at first, although the other runner does move up 90 feet to third. Well, this is certainly something you never want to see. Perhaps the silver lining here, if there is one, is that that got him in the non-throwing arm. So if he had to work his way through this, he probably could. Assuming, of course, that there's nothing broken in there. And I think he is indeed planning to give it another go. Alejandro Deaza is in with two away now as he looks at a called strike one. Ball one. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. And he's got to be careful now that some of these borderline calls don't get him started going downhill. Yeah, and sometimes it's really easy to dwell on those, but you have to keep looking forward. It's not easy, but you've got to do it if you want to have success. Line to the right side, but that's a foul ball. Open stance by Deaza. Here's the pitch. And he just does manage to fight this one off as it's fouled away. Hit hard on the ground is short. And that's through for a base hit. And that'll score the run from third as they go up two to nothing now. Boy. He comes through with a two-out, two-strike RBI. That's a real confidence builder right there. And conversely, that's very deflating if you're out there on the mound. Adam Eaton will try and keep things going now with a runner at first following the RBI single. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right-handers starting to loosen up. They set the target in, and this finds the inside corner for strike one. Pulls this one into center for a base hit. Oh, and the throw back in is a wild one. Fortunately, however, the third baseman's able to run it down, so there's going to be no advance. Wow. Wow. Watch the reaction here in show motion after this ball's hit. Pitchers have nightmares about balls coming back like this, and this one nearly undressed him as it rocketed into center field. That could have really been trouble. Paul Canerco. Let's see what he can do here with two on and two out here in inning number five. And this one runs up high. Ball one. And here's his fastball for a cold strike one, and he's hitting an even 90 on the gun. A high fastball that time in the strike zone and on the outside corner. 
but that is a dangerous spot to be pitching if you're only throwing in the low 90s. Come on. A little bit outside, two and one. And one thing you can't do here, you cannot lose him and load the bases. He's still got a couple pitches to play with, but I'd expect this one to be somewhere in a strike zone. And a good spot for that pitch is it's chopped foul. Runner not going anywhere at second. Now the pitch. And a tough pitch on two strikes as he's able to foul it off. Lined hard to center field. A dive, but it'll get past him out in center, and this could roll till tomorrow. Around third and being waved on home. And he will score as well. They've doubled their lead now to 4 nothing, And he's in there with a two-run triple. Well, this is what happens when you dig yourself a hole out there on the mound. This is all his own fault. And both of those runners are going to come around to score on what works out to be a two-run triple. So a man at third here with two gone. And in steps Adam Dunn. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. Good zip to the fastball there by Nolasco, and it's nothing in one. Surprising to you guys that it looks like they're going to pitch to him? It is to me. I mean, I wouldn't go anywhere near this guy with a base open. And that's inside off the plate with the fastball. It's one and one. Seems like whatever was working early on suddenly is not working now. It's almost like he's imploding right before our eyes. Now a swing and he just fouls this one away. Touch that pitch! Let's go! And he strikes him out here, so he's able to stop the bleeding a bit as the side is retired. So three runs on four hits, no errors, and a man left on. We're through five here at the ballpark. It's the White Sox four, and the Twins nothing. Alex Presley will stand in to start things off as this top of the batting order hasn't found a whole lot of success so far. In fact, just one hit between the one, two, three hitters combined. So apparently the table setters have not been getting their chores done. Oh, and he runs up and gets a good one down. But the throw will be in time at first, so he's denied the base hit on a bunt attempt. Sometimes that first pitch of an inning, a guy will go up there and show a bunt, but then pull it back. Just to pull that third baseman in a few steps. But he's not bluffing right here. He's trying to beat this thing out. But he winds up heading back to the dugout after just one pitch. Pedro Florimond will stand in, and he, like so many others, hitless in the ballgame so far. First offering on the way. First pitch here misses wide, 1-0. And right now, these guys just need something to break their way. A blooper, a bunt, a hit by pitch. Something to get a base runner and give that guy something else to think about out there. And he fires in a strike this time to make it one ball and one strike. Too high there and maybe a bit outside as well. Two and one. Quick. Fastball is looked at for strike two. Bases are empty, one man out.
fastball. Strike three called as he couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. And a lot of times, you, know, you might say, ah, you know, four-run lead, we'll make that up. But I tell you, the way he's throwing the ball right now, they might be fortunate just to get one run off him. Joe Maurer will stand in now with two away, trying to avoid another one, two, three inning. Now, this has been total domination these past few innings. They haven't been able to mount any kind of threat whatsoever. And a high strike to begin the at-bat. It's 0-1. And that has been the comfort zone so far in this outing. He's just lived on that outside corner, and it's paid big dividends for him. That's over, but low, it's a ball and a strike. Now here's a hard hit ball. Caught out there at second base. Unlucky that time, and that ball will end the inning. He'll start out the bottom of the sixth. Avisail Garcia will be the batter as we get things going in the bottom of the sixth. Avisail Garcia. Hit hard. But foul. Now some action out in the Minnesota pen as it looks like both a lefty and a right-hander are up to throw. And this ball's heading for the seats down the right side as the count will move to 0-2 now. Here comes the pitch for Garcia. Too high. One and two. Soda. Now here's a ground ball that will get by the mound and into center field for a leadoff single. Good job there making a two-strike adjustment. Very compact there. He uses the middle of the field. And this just finds its way into center for a base hit. Connor Gillespie will stand in again. He lined out his first time around and then was a strikeout victim last time up. Fastball in there for a called strike. And he powers a cut fastball by him that time, and he's in charge now, nothing in two. Oh, this is hit hard towards second. And that's through. A base hit. Well, for a relief pitcher, he hasn't given him a whole lot of relief. That's back-to-back -back singles now since he showed up. And he's in a heck of trouble now. Alexi Ramirez will step in. He doubled and later scored his last time. Good lead off a second there. Now the pitch. The cutter runs outside. Ball one. Good 
Swing and a ball pulled hard down the line in left. And that is down for extra bases as this will get one home and maybe two. And they'll tack on one more as this is now a 5-0 game. Gordon Beckham will stand in in another dangerous spot here in the inning as this ball game is hanging on the precipice of getting out of hand. Yeah, I think you have to get this guy if you're going to have any chance of sticking around. Even a single here might put this one out of reach. And that's high for a ball, 1-0. and oh. Well, you know, three straight hits are bad enough, but now he's making things even worse by falling behind the next guy. Now a 58-foot curveball that misses for a ball. Well, you know, he's starting to look a little bit frustrated out there. He's looking for the right formula, but he hasn't been able to find it. Five runs, ten hits, and no errors so far for the White Sox. In the dirt, it's 3-0 now. This is the kind of inning he's not pitching efficiently. He's just trying to be too darn fine. Not trusting his stuff. Here he comes on 3-0. and And a good comeback there. It's 3-1. and And this will be fouled away. It swung on and hit in the air toward the line in right. Garcia has it, and I'd be surprised if they send the runner. And he's just going to try to draw an airmailed throw as he heads back to third now with one away in the inning. I just didn't get enough of that one to get that run home, so... That's probably a wide decision to hold it third. Tyler Flowers will stand in. One of the few guys not to join the hit parade so far. Cut fastball taken for strike one. And he gets a piece of it here, but it's chopped foul. And a swing and a miss as they caught him reaching that time, and there are two away. Well, you know when you get two strikes on you, you go into that protection mode up there at the plate. Let's see where this pitch winds up. Oh, yeah. That thing's nowhere near the strike zone, and that's a good job of making a guy go fishing for something he didn't really want to hit. Alejandro Deaza will get another crack, one for three thus far. Let's go! Starts him out with a cutter, and he gets him to swing through at one strike. Oh, can't spot the cutter any better than that. Nothing in two now. Boy, things are going from bad to worse so far. He's looking completely lost up there. Second and third, two away. Good job of holding up on the low ball there, and it's one and two. From the belt, kicks and deals. And this one is off the catcher's glove, and that might be a run. 
And a near disaster there, but he's able to recover in time and make it back to third safely. And that misses, so it's a full count, three and two. You can just sense him starting to tense up out there on the mound. They had him down 0 and 2, and now he's struggling to make the perfect pitch, and it's not happening. Now the payoff pitch home, and he takes ball four. So now at least they're set up for the force at any base here with two away. That's a real good at bat there. He fell behind one and two right out of the gate, but instead of going out of the zone to protect, he was able to lay off three straight and get his guys a leadoff base runner. Come on, you can go out. Adam Eaton. Dig in with socks on every base and two men out. First pitch is a cutter looked at 0-1. Yeah, definitely taken all the way. Not a bad idea with the bases loaded. Off the plate, one ball, one strike. Now that's just another cut fastball, trying to work that thing back to the outside corner. But he's not getting that call right now, nor is he getting guys to chase it. Knock it out of here! Down low, two balls and a strike. Now the pressure will really start to mount out there. That strike zone's going to feel like it's the size of a soup can right now. Come on! Come set, now the pitch. Here's a big swing and a miss on the fastball, two and two. And in a spot like this, you've got to go after strikes. Two out, bases loaded. Here's the two and two offering. Swing and a ground ball towards the middle, and that's through into center field. Base hit. And the second run will score as this suddenly is now a 7-0 ball game. Well, even though he's the number two hitter in the lineup, he says, hey, I'm not just here to be a hit and run guy. I can drive in runs just as well as the three and four guys can. True to his word, he comes through here with a two-run single. Paul Canerco will step in now with three home in the inning and another two men out there on base. This inning's really starting to unravel quickly from a defensive point of view. This is where you need a nice pop-up in a big way. Your turn, Paul. Let's go. Coming. Get that ready. And a cut fastball in there for a strike. It's 0-1. Seems like they're showing a lot of faith in this guy, leaving him out there. And I think you appreciate that as a pitcher, but sometimes when you don't have it, you don't have it. it looks like this is going to be one of those times. Runner holding tight at second, now the pitch. And this is low, but nice footwork back there by Maurer as he hangs on. That's right. Wait for your pitch. Hit the target, but this is low, two and one. And now, as a reliever, you've got to go out and give 100% and focus on the task at hand. You can't let the emotion enter the equation, or it'll mess up your concentration, and things will get even worse. And he just gets a piece there as this is chopped foul. Three runs already home here. Keeping him close there at second. Now the pitch. And they're working the outer half here, but that one's wide for ball three. In danger now of a second walk out of the bullpen. Not exactly providing relief. He's got to find it here somehow.
Now a swing as he hits this one into the air. But this will be foul off to the right out of play. Boy, really making him work now as the seventh pitch of the at-bat is also fouled away, so the count will hold steady at three balls and two strikes. And that pitch misses for ball four. So some intrigue now as the bases are loaded here with two away. Well, when you're already in a deep hole, the last thing you want to do is keep digging. But the walk here is only going to make things worse. Caleb Fieldbar will come on now to try and sort this mess out as he'll likely be asked to go at least a few innings here. Adam Dunn will be the first one to greet him and he'll bat in a big spot here. Bases loaded and two out in the inning. And that one swung on and missed 0-1. And, and this ball will be chopped foul. And Dunn able to hold off on that one. Smart move there as it's one and two. Get a hit. Come on. And he strikes him out here, so he's able to stop the bleeding a bit as the side is retired. So all in all, they're fortunate to give up just three in the inning as they wind up escaping the bases loaded jam. We're through six full. The White Sox lead this one seven to nothing. Back here on the south side of Chicago, White Sox on top in this one. But before we get out to the seventh, let's take a look at our game summary through the first six. Josh Willingham will lead it off here in the top of inning number seven. Designated hitter, Josh. Willingham. First pitch of the inning is taken low and away for a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. Uh, he just about went around. He, he was lucky to put on the brakes when he did. And clearly trying to keep the ball low here. That's ball two. And this is where a guy who's been around a long time knows, hey, we're not going to make up the difference with just one swing. It's going to take base runners. So that's a good job of being really patient at the plate. Sail ready with the 2-0. And he'll lay the fastball in here to get the count back to 2-1. and one. Well hit. Deep down the right field line. And that nearly would have gotten him on the board. Instead, it's a long foul ball. Here he comes on two and two. And here's a slider. Strike three called. And that'll be the first out of the inning. And that slider's been an effective pitch for him. No doubt. As you take a look there, what his pitch breakdown looks like so far. Trevor Plouffe will step in now. He's bounced out and flown out in his first two plate appearances. And a bit too high with that one. It's 1-0. and Well, one thing we've seen from this guy on the mound so far, when he makes bad pitches, they typically miss out of the strike zone. They don't miss in the zone where they can be crushed. The 1-0. 
And 2 and 0 now as this misses below the knees. Outside, 3 and 0 now. He's definitely looking fastball there. And you know, he got one, but good recognition not to go up and chase it. The 3-0. Oh, oh and the green light there, but it's three balls and a strike now. You have to say, they've really had a good game plan for attacking the 3-4-5 hitters all game long. Yeah, and I think the only thing that's better than a game plan has been the execution of that game plan. You're exactly right. They've held this lineup at bay. And that'll get down for a base hit. And now finally, that base hit breaks a string of 11 straight that he had retired. He was starting to look invincible out there. Brian Dozier will stand in now. He flew out in his first time around and then was a strikeout victim last time. And he lays off here, but it's a cold strike one. A look here at the hits per side here in the late going. And a fastball way off target here, and it's even at one. Well, that one definitely took off on him right there. He's lucky that thing didn't go all the way to the backstop. one is in the air now out to center. Eaton's able to put this one away and that's out number two. Can you take a look there at the line from our starter? I mean basically he's allowed three singles so far and that's it. They haven't been able to mount any real opposition against him so far. Oswaldo Arcia will stand in. He's singled and popped out in his first two at-bats. And he lays off a pitch here that he probably shouldn't have. 0-1. Yeah, he's definitely still bringing it. It's the seventh inning, and we're still here in the catcher's mitt snapping all the way up here. Two out with the man at first. Now a ball softly hit over to the right of the mound. Throw on to Canerco will be in time, and the inning is over. Twins wind up stranding one. They need to get something cooking here. It's 7-0. Avisail Garcia will step in now to lead off the home half of the seventh. Right fielder, Avisail Garcia. Here comes the pitch for Garcia. And a fastball's in there for strike one. This crowd, likely in the 40,000 range, they've got to like what they've seen so far. Oh, and it's been a complete performance. They need to find a way to bottle this up and keep it going. Swing, hard hit ball to second. And a rather easy first out. The batter, third baseman, Connor Gillespie. Connor Gillespie will dig in. He singled and later scored his last time. Now here's the first pitch. Here and it's the outside yeah. corner. It's strike one. All one's the count. One out, nobody on. Another fastball. Another called strike. Nothing in two now. Oh. 
And here's a swing and a ball lifted in the air into fairly deep center field. Under it is Presley, and he's got it for route number two. That ball was hit well, and it might have been a different story if he pulled it. Instead, he hit it to the big part of the ballpark, and he's retired. Alexi Ramirez will dig in. He doubled home a run last time around. A fastball off the plate away. It's ball one. And here's a ball hit in the air. And that will conclude matters here in the seventh. Nothing across here this half of the inning. Eighth inning coming up. And the White Sox are out in front. Seven to nothing. Jason Kubel will try it again. He's grounded out and struck out in two trips. Left fielder, Jason Kubel. And here's a fastball called for strike one. Well, that man right there is into his eighth inning of work now. Any concerns going forward? Well, I think the only thing you have to worry about is that pitch count you see right there. Other than that, he's earned the right to stay out there. Usually the other team will tell you when you're starting to get tired. The 0-1 is a fastball low, and that evens the count at 1-1. One one. Ah, changed things up on him, and he got him to swing through it. One and two now. Seems like it's been a fairly consistent pattern. Hard stuff early, soft stuff late. But these guys don't seem to have caught on yet. It's a pretty standard operating procedure, too. I, but they just look lost. Oh, a fastball swung on and missed. And for the second time today, he's gone on strikes. Yeah, he just keeps rolling right along. Shut out intact as you get a look at his line so far. Through seven and a third innings now. They have just not been able to mount any type of offense against him at all. Peter Kahn will dig in for a third time now. He's popped out and grounded out so far. First pitch coming. And a bouncing ball foul. Bases are empty, one man out. Swing and an easy one for the first baseman. And Canerco takes it over to first himself for the out. Well, these fans have been treated to a fine outing out of their hometown starter as we give you a look at the numbers here. A big zero in the run column on the right-hand side of your screen. Alex Presley will stand in now with two away, needing to really get something started here. And their chances of getting back into this ball game are growing dimmer by the batter. Oh, no batter, no batter. We got him. First pitch on the way. Too high, 1 0. Coming up on the century mark in pitches now through the first seven and two thirds. Fastball, and that thing got up there at 95 miles an hour, a ball and a strike. Quick. In there at the letters, one and two now. Yeah, and that fastball still got some life to it, even over 100 pitches. Big swing there as it's hit pretty well out toward deep left field. Therefore, it is Diazza to put it away and retire the side. Can't ask for much more than this. Eight shutout innings thus far. Home half of the eighth straight ahead. It's the White Sox seven and the Twins nothing. Gordon Beckham 
will stand in now to lead things off, and he'll do so with the same pitcher still out there. Seems he's earned himself another inning. I think that's a definite vote of confidence, but he's done a nice job since coming in, so you might as well ride that hot hand. There's a good fastball on the outside corner as you'll take a look at strike one. And a pitch in the dirt as he lays off. It's one and one. Down low again, it's two and one. And this is going to be a foul ball. Now a hard liner toward short. In there, a base hit. Yeah, this might have caught a little too much of the inside part of the plate. I think he wants his in a little tighter, but didn't get it in all the way. And it winds up costing him. Tyler Flowers will dig in. Strikeout victim is last time. Watches a fastball right there for strike one. And that's in there as well. 0-2 oh now. Yeah, and it doesn't look like he's trying to get a ground ball here. He's coming right after him trying to get a punch out. Nobody out, runner on first. Come on, you can do it. And he reaches for one out of the zone and misses rather badly for the first out. How about that sequence right there? Fastball, fastball, and fastball again. No surprise what he's featuring out there today. Just straight hard stuff. And he gets the three-pitch see you later. Alejandro de Aza will get another crack, one for three thus far. Come on, get the runner to second! Up and in for ball one. Here's a ball chopped down the first baseline, but it's a foul ball, says the first base umpire. Runners on first with one down. And that misses two and one. That's what you have to do against a big sweeping slider like that. It starts in the zone, and it's probably going to finish out of the zone, so that's a good job just to lay off. And he's fallen behind now, three and one. Adam Eaton is on deck, he'll hit next. Lay out of the double play. And he lays off here, a nice job, it's ball four. First and second now with one away. Well, he's gonna find that hitters in the big leagues are much more patient than they were down at AAA. A strikeout in the minors turns into a walk at this level. Adam Eaton 
will dig in. He singled and drove home two his last time. No lead to speak of at second. Here's the pitch. And he'll look at a fastball that doesn't miss by a whole lot. It's 1-0. Pretty good speed here coming out of that left-handed batter's box. So it's no sure thing that a ground ball means a double play. And this is going to find the crowd down the left field line. It's a ball and a strike. Let's get a couple runs. And oh, look out. Up and in and nearly took his head off. Yeah, he's not trying to hit him, I don't think. But sometimes you need to keep guys honest up there. I think that's all he was trying to do there. On a ball hit hard down the line toward the coaching box, it's a foul ball. Watch the DP! And he'll fight just to stay alive here as this is fouled away. Too high. Ball three. Yeah, and that's not the pitch you want to throw on two and two. I mean, that was so high, he didn't even have to think about swinging at it. Making him sweat out there. The seventh pitch coming up. Come in, get that ribbon. And he'll just fight this one off as it's chopped foul. And a little battle stop, brewing stop, here as stop, he fights stop. off the two-strike pitch and chops it foul. Red, now a swing, and he pops him up. And I believe, yes, the umpire signaling for the infield fly rule. And the way this inning's gone, his eyes had to be lighting up on that pitch, but all he could do was pop it up. Paul Canerco. We'll stand in with a showdown looming. Two on, two out here in inning number eight. Low for ball one. And against a veteran hitter like this, you got to be in that strike zone early in the count because the more pitches he sees, the better he's going to be able to time anything you've got. The 1 0 home. Here's one hit towards the hole. Throw on to first, and the White Sox come up with nothing as the inning is over. White Sox strand a couple, and they hold a 7-0 lead. Pedro Florimon will be tasked now with leading things off in their half of the night as they'll try to do something to prevent being shut out. And whatever they've done for the first eight innings hasn't yielded a whole lot so far. So, quite frankly, I'm not expecting too much. Off we go in the ninth as the first pitch misses for ball one. And for all the pitches he's thrown, only one walk so far. That's a little bit surprising. First two pitches off the mark here. It's 2-0. and oh. And he'll lay the fastball in here to get the count back to 2-1. and one. That's one of those fastballs that just never feels like it's going to be a strike. It's up at the letters, and that's a tough one to do anything with. Swing and a ball hit foul as this will find the seats in right. Come on now. And they 
take him out of the zone here, and he obliges. Not the greatest of swings there for the first out. Two outs away from a victory here that you'd have to say will be a rather convincing one. And you know, Matt, in every phase of the game, hitting, pitching, defense, it all favors the home side here. Top to bottom, they've been the better team. Joe Maurer will dig in. He lined out hard in his last time around. Outside target here, and he hits it for strike one. I know we have a tendency in the media to get hung up on pitch counts, but this is a legitimate workload he's sweated through so far. Yeah, anytime you get up around that 110 mark, you put in a full shift, and he's fast approaching it here. And boy, big problems here to start this at bat. It's 0-2 now. And even though he's pitching well, this is a part of the order that he's really got to worry about. You know, they can turn a good outing into a bad one pretty darn quickly. And he'll try to hold back, but he won't be able to as that's ruled a swing, and there are two away now. And he just continues to roll right along. He's working on a three-hit shutout this late in the ballgame. Josh Willingham. The stand-in now is their last shot here with two away in the ninth. Yeah, just one final hurdle here before he finishes off the shutout. Really? Fastball here as he'll take a look at ball one, one and oh. And the fastball hitting 93 on the gun. It's one and one. I tell you, he's got a good pace, a good tempo to him out there right now. Bases are empty here with two men out. Now the one and one pitch. Ah, and that's cut on and missed. So now the Twins are down to their final strike here. I'll tell you, he's been living on that corner all the afternoon. You can tell guys at the plate, they're starting to get frustrated. He just hasn't made many mistakes at all. And when he has, they've been out of his own. And this one's chopped foul right at home plate. Crowd of over 39,000 on their feet. Now another pitch is hit foul and headed for the seats, so the count will stay put at one and two. And he just manages to stay alive here as he fights this one foul. Another 1-2 delivery. And a fastball in the dirt that's taken for a ball. Such a good at-bat right here. When you can grind out seven, eight pitches against a guy that's running short on gas, that can be huge. And he tries to get him to reach for it, but it stays outside. Three and two. And a good job here of making him throw a lot of pitches. I mean, he probably doesn't have a whole lot left in the tank, so... The more you make them work, the better your chances of getting a mistake. Swing and a hot shot towards the hole. Throw on to first to take care of him and the White Sox. Move to 1-0 on the young season as this ball game is over. Well, we've talked about it all throughout this game. He was completely in charge, essentially, from pitch one. And now he finishes off a masterful performance here, getting the complete game shut up. Check of the line score as you see the key players there in this shutout victory. And guys, you 
can't win if you can't score, so there's probably not a whole lot of debate about who'll take home tops player of the game honors in this one. Yeah, definitely no, no debate as far as I'm concerned. He was really in complete control the whole way through. Only really got into trouble a, a few times, and he winds up with a complete game shutout. So that'll just about do it. For Eric Caro, Steve Lyons, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. This has been a presentation of MLB The Show. For more, don't forget to check out theshownation.com. The White Sox win it 7 to nothing. So long from Chicago. Final line score this afternoon, first for the victorious White Sox. Seven runs on 12 hits. No errors. They left nine runners on base. For the Twins, no runs, three hits, no errors. They left four men on base. The winning pitcher is Chris Sale. His record is now 1-0. The loss goes to Ricky Nolasco. He falls to 0-1. Time of the ball game, three hours exactly. Our paid attendance at U.S. Cellular Field this afternoon, 59,345. The White Sox thank you for attending and encourage you to buckle up and drive home safely.